Good morning, Brendan. Good morning. Um, we are grateful unto God for yet another day. So today, I will be presiding, and Nick will be helping me out with their song leading. So. And Simeon will be reading, and the scripture will be from Luke 15. And um, the law table will be Nick, and he's replacing uh, Robert, both their song leading and then the law table, because Robert is on the album. So please let's remind him, remember him in uh, prayers. And there'll be no preaching today. Uh, because right afterwards there will be, or maybe after a little bit of a cup of tea or a coffee or something, there will be the men's meeting. And, uh, yeah. For next week, and the refreshments, the refreshments will be calling in hell today. And uh, refreshments for next week would be Robert and Connery. Simeon will be presiding next week, God willing. And, um, as well as some bleeding. Mark will be bringing us uh, the reading, and that will be from Luke 16, 1 through to 18. And then um, I'll be bringing the Lost table, and our brother Emmanuel will be preaching. And for cleaning, a Samuel and a Mantor, and their freshness will be Robert and Karen. Please let's uh, all return our books to a season for worship. Uh, it uh, makes it a little bit relatively easier for uh, our brethren will be cleaning. And uh, apparently the next devotional evening will be at Livingston, and that will be the 29th of July at 1900 hours. And we still collecting the used stamps, so there's a box at the rear of the hall so you can uh, put it in. And there's still the new the list for all brethren who want help in cleaning and then for the refreshments as well. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22 reads, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. Shall we be upstanding as we turn our hymns to hymn 585, after which our brother Emmanuel will bring us the first prayer. So there's a Christ
gracious, loving, and ever merciful Father in heaven. We are here in your presence this morning with hearts full of gratitude for your goodness towards us. We appreciate you for counting us worthy to be among those who worship you, the creator of all things, instead of worshiping those things that were created. We appreciate you for having been with us all through the past week, for having protected us from all the dangers and perils of both the days and the night. And most importantly, for making it possible for us to be here in your presence and without any others on our ways. We are grateful for the sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf, which has given us the greatest privilege a man could have on earth, which is having direct access to you, our God. We plead that you please accept our thanks and praises. We have made the fact that we are imperfect because we are human. And with all humility, we bow before you this morning, pleading that you please be merciful unto us and forgive us of all our shortcomings. Let not our, our sins hinder our worship of this day from being acceptable in your presence, O Lord. And we commit all that we shall be doing here this morning into your hands, that you please take perfect and absolute control of all sins, that you lead us and help us to be able to worship you in truth and in spirit in accordance to the scriptures, that at the end of it all, that we may be richly blessed, while all the glory and honor that has always been yours shall continue to be yours forever and ever. Lift all our bodies and help us not to be worried by the things of this world, but that we may continue to focus on Christ and even the goal of eternal life which you have set before us. Let none of the things of this world be able to distract us from this great goal that we intend to achieve at the end of the day. That at the end of our sojourn here on earth, that we may be able to reign with you eternally, where there will be joy everlasting. Be with all our brethren who are not able to be here this morning for, what, for whatever reasons. Meet them at their point of needs. And please help us all to continue to grow in our faith and that we may continue to aspire to be closer drawn to you on the days of our lives. That all that concerns you may always be our priorities in life. Thank you, Father, because we know you have had us this day, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if we kindly turn our hymn to 732. Now, our brother, in a short while, our brother Simeon will be um, bringing us a reading from Luke 15. Luke 15. And last but not the least, um, we're grateful to our brother Colin for continuing to record the worship for us today. Hymn 732. We praise the Lord for the song. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
the same thickness. Good morning. Luke chapter 15 is a chapter that carries three parables of Christ. The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the prodigal son. I'll read from verse 1 to the end of the chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after one that is lost until he finds it? And when he, had found, when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Of what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the lost, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you. There is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And he said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all year and took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pots that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's servants, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf, and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this, for this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and he began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, what these what this things meant? And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Look, 
These many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It, is fitting, it was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Thank you, Brother Simeon. It is said that the true value of a product is revealed after one loses it. And God rejoins on every soul. Now, our brother Nick, I think finally, yes, our brother Nick will be, will be after a tussle with, with him, Mark, um, he will be leading us in the uh, Lord's Supper. Now, shall we be upstanding, please, as we turn on him to 363, Jesus rose of Shaman, after which our brother Nick will bring us to us away. Jesus rose of
Thank you. 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 Thank you.
honour and glory to you and the full knowledge that Christ died that we might have life in him. And so we take the bread that represents his body, we share it as we remember him and what he did for us. And in his name we pray. Over our thanks for the cup. Heavenly Father, we again come to you to ask your blessing on this cup that we share, the contents of which represent the blood of Christ that was shed so freely to make the payment for our sins, to cleanse us of all sin. make it possible for us to live through him, in him, and by him, to be called your children, for you to be our loving Father, who waits with arms outstretched as we make our way home. So as we continue to keep this feast until the day when Christ comes, help us to do so in spirit and in truth. Help us to do so proclaiming his name. Help us to do so giving you all the glory for what you do in him for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again. Heavenly Father, we're immensely grateful for Jesus, for his sacrifice, for the body he gave, the blood he shed. We ask you to strengthen us as we go into a new week facing trials and temptations. And we ask for your strength to overcome those. We pray, Father, that you will guide us, that you will help us to guide others to to give you the praise and the glory we thank you most of all for Jesus in his name we pray Amen Amen Thank you brother Nick we're meant to be summer is that right and I can hear the wind and the uh, yeah, so much for summer, but, well, 
Very good. Now, like I said earlier, there will not be any preaching today. But I'd like to turn out here to 68, whilst we read this verse from Philippians. Philippians 4, 12 through to 13. Now, Paul said, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And that is the strength we seek from God. <clears throat> to guide us through all circumstances. In 68. <clears throat> He will be in the lead, and that all our footsteps shall be touched. 
As we end today's service, shall we be upstanding then ten to him two hundred. In two hundred. Hallelujah. Praise accepted unto thee in Jesus' mighty name. We thankful unto you for everything that you've done in our lives and continue to do in our lives. We thank you for the knowns and the unknowns. We thank you that even as we sin, you continue to love us, protect us, giving us the strength to, co to, co to convert from all our sins. And we thank you that we can call you Father. Many are the things that happened in the course of the week. Many are the things that we're not happy with. Many are the things that we gave thanks to. But it is our prayer that all the things that we were not happy with, may we be given the strength to see all those as opportunities in Jesus' mighty name. 
May we be given the strength to see all those failures as learning points in Jesus' mighty name. May you give us the strength to be able to walk with our head held high, knowing that in all situations, you will be there to protect us. In all situations, you will be there to guard us. As we enter into another week, all the brethren who for various reasons were not able to join us, may they be strengthened so that they'll be able to join us in Jesus' mighty name. As we enter into another week, we know that all our failures will be success in Jesus' mighty name. And we are believing and trusting in you, O God, to touch our footsteps, to touch every word that we utter. May it be a blessing unto others. And may all and some receivers as your servants. May every ploy that has been planned by the evil one be thwarted. And may we continue to have a great week. We are believing and trusting in you, O God, for everything that we touch, for everything that we do, for everything that we intend to do, knowing that you are always ahead of us. And may we continue to experience your wonderful grace. And may we be given the strength to be able to forgive others as well, so that your grace will continue to impart on others. In all things we say, may your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.